in the room alongside Eric Latif Nduoko and Siti Muga is Nerima Wako Ojiwa. She is the CEO of Siasa Place. And now we are joined by another youthful leader in the country. And this is a, a former presidential candidate, former chair. Uh, uh, yes, you were on the presidential ballot, boss. <laughs> so these are the deputy his details. Former deputy presidential candidate, okay. Um, the former chairman of the Youth Enterprise Development Fund and currently the CEO and founder of IGAV Africa. This is Ronnie Usumba, Karibu Sana. Thank you, Eric. And thank you very much for joining us. Welcome That's to the situation. Good room. to see all, the, all of you. Good to see you. Let's start off with just tell us what is IGAV Africa story? Um, so IGAV Africa is an innovation house, basically working with um, young people who are in the startup space to build. Uh, tech solutions for public social good. So we've seen a lot of movement in the fintech, e-commerce, logistics space. Um, Kenya is now a hotbed of innovation across the continent. Uh, year on year, we are attracting the highest investor funds in innovation, but none of this is going into public social solutions. So mm -hmm. healthcare, agriculture, education. Um, so this is the space we are working in, mm -hmm. working as an ecosystem integrator, working with you know the likes of DFID, uh, government of Kenya, ETC, to support young innovators. What 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 is public social solutions? What are they? They are solutions that address public social problems. <laughs> so and what are <laughs> what are public social problems? So access to healthcare, access to education, for example, providing farmers with uh, ex extended services, ETC. So what you are in essence saying is that this is something that hasn't been done before not not as well as it should be so working with the ecosystem we are o organizing the ecosystem to ensure that there is full leverage okay. of technology in these spaces mm -hmm. so for example mm -hmm. today if we had you know innovative solutions around delivery or de of education content to rural areas uh, we wouldn't be struggling with e-learning across the country Okay, so, mm. you know, CS Magoha would have had a solution already mm. to get kids back to uh, learning. learning, right? But now we are still so far back. We are still talking about, you know, pushing the entire academic year simply because we cannot be able to leverage technology. If you look at other places in the world, kids are back to learning, right? Why? Using technology. Hmm. We're talking about the space of youth in leadership. Um, you have... Uh, participated widely in political leadership in engaging the youth as well in various uh, other aspects like you're saying uh, in livelihoods improving the livelihoods by um, you know advancing their own knowledge in technology before the we went to the top of the hour and taking a look at traffic we were engaging with Narima because she was talking about you know how the youth um, view things in terms of government Government is still archaic. You have worked with government as well, Ronnie. You were chairman of the uh, Youth Enterprise Development Fund. Therefore, you worked with government systems. Do you agree with what she's saying? That, you know, government is, is A old. A dinosaur that cannot be worked with. <laughs> well, <laughs> government is government. I think government, the way it is structured here in Kenya, anywhere else abroad, is that government is a bureaucratic system. That is just how government is. Is structured governments are humongous and therefore they are less agile to move as we would in private sector or civil society etc mm. so by its very nature government is rigid so how do you then modernize and make government a bit more agile and i got a glimpse of your mm. engagement you know talking about bringing in more young people so that you know there's a bit more energy dynamism in addressing issues of government mm -hmm. but my own experience is that government has its own pace there are things that we would like to change in government that by its very design and structure cannot be changed um so so yes are we saying that government cannot be faster are we saying that we must keep filing no government can be efficient mm -hmm. but there are no shortcuts in government processes we can make it a bit more efficient but in terms of the way it is structured you know approvals uh, you know there's policy that supports approvals there's legislation that supports policy it's very difficult to change that form of government unless we all go back and say let us renegotiate this structure of government. You mm. know, most processes of government have already gone through that. 
they are just at the stage where they need to be implemented. And this is where the issue of speed comes in. Mm -hmm. The slow speed with which they move. The, the, the example I want to give is that of passports. Prior to the Kibaki government, getting a passport was a complete nightmare. Complete. And there was no guarantee you would get it. Mm. Somehow, with the Kibaki government, I'm choosing this as an example. The other example that I saw changing in the Kibaki government, not only could you get your passport without knowing anyone, the ease with which you got it. What we now have is an improvement of that system where they even call you or they communicate with you to tell you mm -hmm. your passport is ready on this day. Mm. That is a change. Same bureaucracy, same system. Agreed. But there is logic to it. You even know when you look like me and you have a beard like mine, they even tell you, no, 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 please don't, don't bother yourself here. Go over there so that you can get better service. And someone even comes to ask you, uh, how can we assist you? Never existed before. Are youth experiencing the same kind of thing? <laughs> no, that's why I giggled. <laughs> no, but I really. think we need to distinguish between speed and efficiency. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because I think those are two very different things. Obviously, when you are more efficient, then obviously the service is faster. delivered faster. Mm -hmm. Right? But there's a dis distinction. Right? We could urge for speed that is not efficient or is not quality. But if we address the issue of efficiency, <coughs> that's not corona. That's, that's, that's we hope so. that Thank saliva. you for the rider. <laughs> <laughs> because, you know. <laughs> but if we, if we then address the issue of efficiency, efficiency, then efficiency has different components that include the quality of the service you're, re you're receiving as well. The cost of the service. The place where you're receiving the service. Okay, so it's not just about, so think about exactly the same uh, uh, scenario passports. you have painted with mm. passports. Think about what Huduma has done. So Huduma has made the service more efficient, right? Some processes are taking just as long. Mm. But mm. now you can get it closer to your house. Yeah. So you don't have to travel farther, right? You don't have to struggle with long lines at Nyayo House or, or mm. whatever. It is just that the service has been brought closer to you. So now it is more efficient but perhaps still the same period Takes the of time. time. Hmm. So now when we talk about the youth factor here and now trying to have youth involved in this entire process, because we talk about a government that is, you said, discriminatory uh, towards youth, doesn't take into consideration so many things that young people um, suffer from, as it were. And looking at this, again, dinosaur that is government, this huge uh, process, way of doing things, whether it's quicker, faster, how do you see Nerima youth plugging into this which we we know services may change things will become more efficient for everybody mm -hmm. not just necessarily youth how do you see young people then plugging into into this i think they already are because even what ronnie was working on previously with biashara fund you know we had a meeting that's the last time i think i saw you where youth groups had come together mm -hmm. and they were concerned with the Women Fund and Youth Fund being merged mm -hmm. uh, into the Biashara Bank, I think. And so even last week, mm -hmm. young people actually submitted recommendations as to how we can better utilize this policy to reach more young people. So the agitation worked, mm -hmm. not necessarily to have an individual who is young in nature sitting in mm -hmm. the position that would make the change. Yes. Do you see what I'm saying? Yes. So that means that what you would then be looking for is the bubbles to be working amongst the young people mm -hmm. as opposed to somebody sitting in a position that would make a change. And I agree with you there. And mm. that's why I even had mentioned earlier when we were talking, I said it's not necessarily about a person being below the age of 35 representing mm. me. It's just somebody who understands that population being able to sit in that particular position mm -hmm. to be able to now articulate these matters when mm -hmm. it comes to implementation. Mm -hmm. That's what matters mm -hmm. because that's an issue that's global. We could say the same for the UK. We could say the same for Germany. It's not that we have young representatives who are presidents to le legislators and all that, mm -hmm. but there are people who understand their populations. There are those who have said that the greatest hindrance to any so-called youthful enterprise are the youth themselves. Hmm. Ronnie, I mean, from where I you've worked that. in private sector, in government, and looking at the way in which, I mean, we've talked about this, the way in which the, the 
current present population of youth carry themselves, operate, believe, you know, in terms of how they gobble up information and use this information, are they the biggest hindrance to themselves? Are young people the biggest hindrance to young people in this country? I think the youth question is a very complex one. Um, and, and perhaps that is one factor. Are the youth doing enough to, uh, and, and, you know, just to dovetail in the little conversation you've had in there about engagement. What does engagement mean? Mm. How do they perceive themselves to be engaging mm. with government and participating in decision-making processes? Does it mean running for office? Mm. Does it mean sitting in those offices? Or does it mean understanding the processes? So this is where I begin to have problems with young people, mm. but they do not understand the process. So they're clear in their minds, perhaps, what they want, but they don't know how to articulate that, how to fashion that, how to deliver that, and how to follow through but the things they want are being implemented. So I think there needs to be a conversation around how, <coughs> how do we empower young people to engage, first and foremost. Mm. Secondly, you mentioned a very important point, mm. which is information gathering. Mm. How do they gather information? So today, if you talk to young people, they'll say, oh, money is being wasted, there's a lot of corruption. But if you ask them what the procurement process is, for example, procurement process so even youth enterprise mm -hmm. you say okay you want to supply to i don't know ministry of foreign affairs do you even understand the procurement process largely they don't right is it, pfm is it, is it that they don't or they don't want to they don't no they just don't they don't surely who does not want knowledge mm -hmm. there's access to that information yes. I mean, for you to understand that procurement process you have that you have already absolutely. come into access you know i'm going i'm going to contact with this. this information remember you've dovetailed well into something we had earlier on when we we're talking about how young people access information mm -hmm. the rima clearly told us tweet facebook Facebook? What's short, that? short, yes, ready short to do now. It's is fair. there a I procurement also read process? read long form in sometimes no, when no, it's no, interesting. No. I am actually going by what Nerima said. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm not making this up. <laughs> and it's a culture. Yes. She said it. I'm not going yeah. by what I think. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what Nerima <laughs> said. Yeah. Representative I'm, I'm, of the youth. I'm quoting yes. <laughs> And I'm asking, is there a procure? Uh, can a procurement process be, be in short form from many many like 20 of them tweet. no uh, or, or we, 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 so. we have to we have to develop a culture of uh, of reading of resource gathering of of dissemination of information however that said <laughs> back to my original opening statement around innovation for public good mm. is we also need to appreciate as government as 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 media as civil society the consumption patterns yes. mm. of young people mm. yes. and therefore move with the times and mm. say, look, this guy's like short texts. Now, is there a way we can build um, uh, popular versions, digital versions of all this information we need them to consume mm. that we make available to them? When they buy it, then they seek the de more detailed information. Mm -hmm. And I think there are ways you can do that. Mm. And is it necessary then to have individuals, I mean, it, it would sound like a, it would sound like an obvious answer, but maybe it's not so obvious. But would it then be uh, require that you have people of that knowledge and understanding then working in those processes to, number one, suggest? Because the truth of the matter is that anybody who's sitting in the government right now, for example, is not going to be thinking how to make it easier for somebody who no. wants to come and tender. You're going to need somebody who is of like mind sitting in those positions. Now, is there an appetite to have such people brought on? Absolutely. I mean, I, I participated in um, in, a, in a task force that was working with, and I think I had Nerima allude to it earlier. Sorry, I was just getting snippets of your conversation. Mm. Um, that was working, Public Ministry of Public Service was mm. working with the World Bank to come up with a young professionals program mm -hmm. to attract the kind of talent that we see in private sector into government now obviously going into government is a maze you know i normally tell people having been there you know don't want to be a ps when you're young don't want to be a head yeah. of department a ca those things are just complex right but <laughs> there are streams within government where yes we can bring in young agile dynamic people who then change the thinking mm -hmm. within you know de departments agencies ministries to have you know, a youth approach mm -hmm. to delivering programs. I think right? this is this this is not just a it should not be a suggestion. 
you're talking about how to communicate from government to the majority of the population. Again, we've got to come back to this point. It's the majority of the population. If the majority of population consumes information in this way, you've got to find ways of communicating to them Agreed. in that way. Yeah. And there's no way we can say, yes, we are not going to shorten the information that you give on uh, tendering, but you can find better ways of communicating how tendering processes are done. But Eric, you can find better ways of advertising tenders instead of always saying that this tender shall be put on a newspaper with the highest That's national calculation and all. Find other ways of advertising your tender. This enterprise we work for called the media mm. has literally been forced to understand what you've just described. Exactly. Because information doesn't have to be delivered to you on something that has paper on it. Mm. And those who've been slow to understand this have suffered. Mm. The digital age has been with us for quite some time. But look at the slow speed. Now, you know, you know I'm talking about businesses. Mm -hmm. Look at the speed with which we have understood the need to change. Mm -hmm. And we are purveyors of information. So we get information a lot faster and we deal with it on a more regular basis than most people. Yep. So if that is our situation, and remember what we talked about, the mentorship influence that young people have. So you have young people in positions, but what is their mindset? The mindset is that of their mentors. So how do you expect to affect change? So this is what, why I do what I do, mm -hmm. which you were asking earlier. Mm -hmm. I do feel, I is there somebody else doing it? Nobody's doing it. So we're trying to do it. We're trying to go into that space and tell government, look, you have to change your ways. Otherwise, you leave behind a majority of your population. Right. right. And it's not just the young population. Remember, in the digital age, we now have new inequities, inequalities. Sorry. Yeah. Okay. So rural well, some populations. Of them are inequities, my friend. And some are inequities. <laughs> rural populations have been left far behind in the digital movement. Right. Young people are being left behind largely because they can't afford, even if they. It does, the world doesn't even exist for them. No, it doesn't. Yeah. And women. Mm. have been left behind. So, I mean, like in Kenya today, only 45% penetration, digital penetration amongst women, almost 70% amongst men. Mm. That's a huge disparity. Yeah. Mm. Huge. And if we do not begin to address it now, we may get, you know, excited in this bubble of digital. What we won't be realizing 10 years from now, we'll be looking back and we'll be saying, where are the women? Mm. Where are the rural communities? Where are the youth? We'll have left them behind. Right. In as much as structures need to change, structures need to adapt to the changing times. Uh, Nirima, don't you think that there's an element of discipline also that must be introduced into this conversation, um, especially when it comes to which very importantly, how the older generation may see the youth that are operating now? I don't I don't think that's new because I think that every generation views their youth as indisciplined, rogue lack of focus and lost. Mm. Uh, and I don't think that's new. Those are but nice adjectives. <laughs> <laughs> I've had them so often. <laughs> 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 but uh, what I do think is that when it comes to the discipline, where I see it's a bit of a change is that young people these days apparently talk too much. Uh, it's it's almost seen Are as you a sense. This or is no, no, you're I'm, saying I'm it saying from what, your belief or what you've heard. What I've heard. Oh, okay. Uh -huh. And and it's it's been seen as a, a sense of the talk disrespect. Much as to whom exactly? Huh? <laughs> <laughs> talk like, without action is what you mean, or what? Yeah, like um, you know, even the way we joke about how you know, on, on Kenyans on Twitter, mm. they can be very angry about something, but then when it comes to actionables, mm -hmm. you know no one will show up. Mm -hmm. And so those sort of comparatives okay. is what is normally linked with how young people behave. Mm -hmm. and, and even there are studies that have been done by Aga Khan University uh, in terms of understanding how young people view leadership or the people who they view as mentors and things like that, which they did in East Africa. And of course, we remember Sonko came up on top. Um, for Tanzania, it was Diamond. So they wonder... What do young people look at when they view an individual that they perhaps admire? And that's changing because it goes back to your conversation where you had said how we're very centered on materialistic views mm -hmm. and it's about me, me, me. But when you grow up or when you're surrounded by almost complete scarcity, frankly speaking, in December, two million young people 
were considered ghost workers, not in school, not at work, unemployed. Now, when we're talking about this pandemic, um, within these few months, that number is going to double, of course, mm. into the millions. Again, we're talking about a population being majority young. So what impact does it have? So when you have somebody who doesn't have access to basic needs such as food how can they not think about eating when they are hungry mm. by the way i don't think we're referring to basic needs here no we're talking about things that go beyond basics but that's not a discussion i want to have i want to ask when we talk about the youth do they even understand the strengths that they have fully no no do they understand their strong point because this is what you leverage if you want to make change or you want something to benefit your specific mm. group, you leverage what you're strong in. Do they, Do they understand their power? I have, a, I have a problem with that statement. Please have a problem. Yes, mm. because this is the situation. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you, you cannot know what you're good at unless you've been exposed to it, you've been coached in it, and you've been allowed to thrive in it. Let us allow young people to fail. So let's try them. So for me, it's not a problem with young people perceiving their strength. It's a problem with the system allowing them Give to them the test opportunity. Uh, those now strengths. I have a but you see, that's where the strength was coming in. Yes. Is the strength for them to take up these opportunities. Or they're to not wait. being given for them. And to wait. Because waiting for the state to do these things, you know how that turns out. You know who's in charge of the state. You know how those in leadership think. The state to allow them. It's not in their interest, Agreed. basically, to Agreed. give these opportunities. But, 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 friends, I must disagree with you on this one. Please it disagree. is the state's responsibility. You cannot shift that responsibility to a majority of the Kenyans. No, we're not shifting. It, 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 it is the state's, state's responsibility, responsibility yes. to provide those platforms but and to and allow to them. Yes, it's it's environment. Absolutely. Yeah. Glad that you said state, not government. This is the situation room, Kenya's biggest conversation, also live streaming on KTN Home, as well as our digital platforms, www.spicefm.co.ke, spicefm ke on YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter. In the situation room this morning, my name is Eric Latif. We have C.T. Muga, Nduoko, Nerima Wakojiwa, and Ronnie Osumba. So, you are disagreeing with something that C.T. was saying, and this is about youth uh, and their knowledge and their power, and the state's responsibility to give the youth the opportunities that they deserve so they can fail, so they can learn. You what know, is your disagreement again? Okay. Well, my, my, I wouldn't go to disagreement. It is... <laughs> It's just uh, an additional opinion to the discussion. Mm -hmm. The If you have a government that you feel doesn't understand what the problems are, then you make them understand these problems. Because if they don't understand the problems, even this role that they're supposed to play, they will misplay it or they'll do something that is completely useless. But when you think that the government even set up a youth fund, a set up a ministry that deals with youth matters, then you have to say, you can't say that this is a government that doesn't understand that the youth issues need to be addressed. Mm. So where do we go wrong? Because those steps seem clear, but then something doesn't work because clearly... I, I think you've said it. It's in the understanding. Thank you. If they, they, they are doing it, but they are doing it from their understanding. There's knowing that there's something the needs to be done, mm. and then there's doing it properly. And now this is where the youth come in. Absolutely, take which over, is what we take up the about. mantle and now. So the engagement engage. issue I mentioned earlier, mm. that's where engagement comes in. But let's take a step back. And why I was saying fundamentally we have a broken system because there are some very fundamental responsibilities of state. Forget government. Governments come and go. Of state. Because of how you have structured yourself that there are some fundamental things that come to you as a right. So irrespective of which government is in place. Correct. They are there. Mm -hmm. And this is why I am saying the way we are currently structured, this state, the way it is currently structured is unfriendly to the youth. Perhaps because we have not had a moment. <laughs> I hear mm. people talk about a constitutional moment, moment. When things need to, to shift. I think perhaps we have not yet had a youth crisis moment and this comes okay. dovetail straight into what city was saying mm. you see if the youth understood their power the youth are the majority the youth are the f not the future leaders of tomorrow they are the 
leaders of, of today. Now. Yeah. Right? If the youth understood that power, then they'd take up. There would be that youth moment. Agreed. And then the youth would engage Agreed. the government with the state and the youth would get what they need from the state. So there's also, other than just understanding no, no, no. what they need. You're shaking your head. And and engaging. I go back to, you know, nowadays me and Mamze, I'm almost chasing Muga here with this big white beard. <laughs> um, so I push it to, to Nerima and, and, and I have you, you represent wishful thinking. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a wishful, wishful, hopeful youth. Future, future elder of tomorrow. Future elder of tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> I think... <laughs> We, we have to call out young people in, in, in their either disorganization mm. or just lack of knowledge or resolve or resolve to organize because that element of organ it would happen. Mm. You know, you'll make noise on Twitter, you rightfully called it out. You'll make some noise on Twitter. KOT is vicious. I never wanted to go foul with KOT because they'll kill you. But if that energy could then be it's organized it's channeled. and Packaged. channeled mm. to spe very specific things with what we said earlier, understanding, knowledge, and follow-through. I think we would be seeing better results. You know, consider, for instance, if you are dealing with youth matters, where is your largest population of the youth? Mm. Hmm? Rural. Mm. You know, you whispered it, so... Rural. Mm. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and these programs that you have, uh, you mentioned, well, talking to MCAs, etc. And I also asked, when you implement them, I'm sure there are some results. Mm -hmm. How effective have these things been? There's a reason why I'm asking this. See, each one of us is a product of our bringing in one way or the other. Mm. But that's a long period of time. And that's why people comment and say, this person seems to be well brought up. Why do people make such statements? It's because your mannerism represents something that is considered acceptable. Okay? Now, how do you get a group of people who have a mindset that takes them in a certain direction to pause first and then change? You have strengths that they keep relying on. It's the youth who are relied on in any electoral system. Mm. It's the youth who are relied on when you're thinking of even work and changing a work system mm. but this is a strength that is dissipated because the youth have not understood that a i think it's a strength and b they don't know how to harness it so how do they harness it so that we can say these people are well brought up meaning mm. they understand what they're doing we may disagree but they do understand because right now anyone who is even a youth will say you know we're a bit disorganized how do you change that because it can change remember this government, the people who first got into government at independence were all youth. Thank you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I agree. Mm -hmm. so Narima is looking at you like, you know, this sage is speaking. So it's a turn to respond. In fact, I was going to <laughs> dovetail into what you said, and then you just pick the words out of my mouth. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That if you look at, the, you know, the Kibakis, all these people who have run government in their later years, all started by organizing in their younger years mm. but look across the continent look across the continent the names that people will call from today till tomorrow Kwame Nkrumah how old was he you look at um, people like San um, um, Sankara how old was Sankara you look at people 30s. like they were in their 30s mm. how when old they started? will Sakaja be when he becomes president or on Yosumba? They started earlier. In Very their early. In, the, uh, late in, their in their late 20s is when they actually started. But it's a long runway. But mm. what, it, it is, is one of the things that you spoke about, runway. Ronnie. It's understanding and it's, it's, that as well. It's the resolve. Yes. It's understanding and then it's a re it's resolve. It's understanding of, okay, if I'm saying I want to go in and make a change here, it's understanding the processes from beginning to end. Not having complete knowledge, but at least having understanding of every sector or mm. area in which you want to go into and make a change. It's just and a then place it is a resolve. It is a resolve that anything, call it under the sun, withstanding, that I am committed to making sure that this thing is going to change. Because unfortunately, what it looks like right now, mm -hmm. and maybe you can tell me different, is that it'll be hot for some months. It'll be hot for some years. But after some time, that scarcity that you talk about creeps in. These other things creep in and start to kind of change your mental processes. And then your resolve flies out the window. How then can we have staying power if truly this is going to change? Mm -hmm. You know, I feel like this conversation in a sense has also been simplified mm -hmm. because I did mention that there are systemic challenges. And even for you, Ronnie, to talk about 
the government in itself and its engagement with young people. And what I'm trying to say, we talked about the National Youth Council. Mm. We talked about the Dwale Bill. So to come here and mention Mwai uh, Kibaki, we can talk about Anyang Nyong, or we can talk about Miguna Miguna. And, you know, even in their youth, where were they? On campus. And, and I started by saying, young people cannot do that on campus today. So Kenya is changing. Why? Why can't young people do that on campus? The Dwale Bill. What they, about the Dwale Bill? They cannot participate in electing their no, 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 no. No, they can. It's just changed in how they participate, where they have their class representatives, then a council, which also consists of the administration that now decides who the leadership of the university will be. Not necessarily directly the university student. It doesn't mean that they cannot engage. Yeah. But Number it's one. changed. So we cannot look at the past and expect that that change will come like the past. But it's these, changed. These bills, this is the thing. You can write a thousand pages on paper, but it doesn't actually stifle the voice of anybody. Who it, wants does. To, it, does, I it doesn't mean it that does. you can't agitate but for Nerema, change. I believe that Nerema, information is limited. Avenues of. are limited. <laughs> How, also, how the this, challenges that young this, people how have does this are completely the youth? different. How is it I, muzzling I, I, the I, youth? I, I want to protect Nerima because you know she. I'm sure she'll start feeling the pressure of all these questions. Mm. We haven't even started asking the question. <laughs> <laughs> it's fine. I will agree with Nerima, and I think I said it also at the beginning. Mm. The youth issue is a complex issue. It's very complex. It's a complex issue, and it's 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 complex in many ways. But one of the things that, Nerima, you have to appreciate, even as youth, as we address these youth issues, is part of the complexity is the changing times. Mm -hmm. So, the strategies of those, that past that Muga was attacking you about are not necessarily the same strategies you should use yeah. today. In fact, if anything, Nerima, now you have a more powerful tool, digital, okay, to help you organize, gather information, Put your minds together and if you are resolved again the other thing is they push one issue one day on k, k or t and then tomorrow, then it's tomorrow something it's else, something else. Yeah. they've moved on mm. so that issue remains hanging right because there's no that staying power and that resolve but that said kibaki was not a student leader mm -hmm. he he <laughs> now i'll support you here he muga said he discovered his his power and talent and leveraged it early Okay, so this was a guy who was a sharp brain, intelligent, uh, an economist, and he just found his space in that time to get in and influence decisions. I don't know if we all know he was an executive director for Kanu, yep. mm. right? At he age 29. Started even earlier. He was actually a lecturer at Makerere. In Makerere days. Mm. Okay, so influencing the thinking. And he didn't need to be a student leader. He didn't need to shout. Of course, uh, President Kibaki, by nature, is a very quiet guy. Mm -hmm. But he found his space and he said, this is the space I will influence. And I will stay in here. I mean, Kibaki would have gone to be... Don't, I don't we have know, examples of such young people? So we people. do. We have examples yeah. of such young people as well. We do. So many and I agree. We do. Yeah. And I agree. Yeah. Absolutely. I, I've worked with quite a number of young people. Mm. I still work with a lot of young people. Very. But the question then is, how do you make this the norm rather than the exception because today the young people who are getting into those spaces and influencing are the exception are the exception, mm, 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 are the exception. and many of them you know uh, end up then becoming they're swallowed mm. by the system yeah. uh, they are swallowed by the system why because they do not have the backup yeah they do not have the support of all young people so you know Ronnie Osumba is the chairman of Youth Fund. Now, instead of supporting him to help you, they'll tear you down. <laughs> they tear you down. That's true. Mm. Okay. Indeed. So I think this, yes, I agree with you. It's a complex issue. But I think as youth leaders, there's need to also appreciate that you're operating in a different time. Mm -hmm. So the strategies of before may not necessarily work now. So what would you advise the youth then to do? Organize. What is organized? Which is just that. You were you for a couple of years back Let me when tell you, you, were you on the presidential ticket. Absolutely. You were in that age Absolutely. Brackets. I saw you put in the poster trenches. In mm. fact, a lot of people were excited because the word trenches 
All right? <laughs> it's, not, it's blood and sweat and gore. Complete, absolutely. Uh-huh. And tears. Yes. All right? And, <laughs> and the question now is, where are the trenches for, for the for young the, people today? Who is leading that battle? Who is taking these people to those trenches? You know, and for, for, so I think it starts with the youth leadership. Mm. Those days, at least when we were in the trenches, late 90s, early 2000s, when we were pushing for constitutional change, mm. doing all these Katiba forums across the country, you know, you could say, Kepta Mbati, Cyprian Nyamwamu, you know, you could quickly say, who are the youth leaders? Mm. Emmanuel Dennis. Uh, today I struggle to think about who the youth leaders are yeah, who, who have a national appeal. So yes, there's a Nerima here, there's somebody else there, there's somebody else there, but do they have a national appeal? Are Can they, they walk working, into a village? Together? They, again, are they walking together? Okay. Can they walk into a village in Kitui and have a voice and have a discussion with the young people? Those days, they could. You know the problem why I asked, That's organized. Why I asked about the population, the largest population of youth and where they reside? Is because you'll find that even as something as basic as a value system of those who are young and live in town and those who are young and live in the rural areas will be completely different. Mm. Mm. So Nerema might appeal to people who are in town. But how do we reorganize Nerema so that she appeals to anyone who calls themselves youth? I think we just ask her to work with the KYMCAs. We do. Right? So you see... And that's why she started by saying we have over about a thousand MCAs around the country who are below 35 years of age. Mm. And they recognize themselves, they recognize the place that they are in, and they've come together, they're even organizing, and they also have uh, an association or a forum mm. yeah. of the young MCAs around the country. Yes. Those young MCAs from across the country are representing the youth in the villages. Who is it that they listen to? Each other or a more senior person? This is what I'm asking. Mm -hmm. Number two, why is it that when we speak about leadership, we only talk about yeah, politics. Mm. Yeah. I mean, there are civil re leaders who lead societies and communities. They're not interested in the politics. They just want to organize and resolve issues within their communities. They're business leaders. Today, a lot of young people, a lot of young people are leading mid-sized mid co corporations mm -hmm. in Kenya. Where are they in this discussion? Because they now have the capital to finance this whole conversation that we're talking about. Religious leaders. Do they have the will to engage? This is the question. Because here, have they the, been here is the link. The, the missing link here is that, you know, we've got to get, and that's why you started by saying why you formed Siasa Place and what Siasa Place is all about, is because politics affects our everyday. every day. So for them to impact in terms of policy, of governance, and everything else that's how, that will happen, there has to be a political engagement. Yeah. And yes, so the other youth leaders who are organizing in communities, who are, you know, successful entrepreneurs in their SMEs, and how do they engage with these people who've gone into politics? Agreed. And Muga will tell you as you as you chip in that that <laughs> that, that, that a lot of the youth leaders of four mm. eh? no of because four. you know he would know because he's even used old English of four of four of even he should have added of you of yeah. you <laughs> <laughs> no because he would know this because I'm sure you know he grew up with these people mm. but religious leaders. Hmm. from our mosques and from our churches yep and you know we talk about them in reverence uh, people who led uh, political <coughs> agitation are they still influential religious leaders well but that's my point where are the younger religious, uh, religious leaders? leaders are still influential mm. they still are very very influential the question i want to actually raise is this huh? the one area that you said you focus on a great deal is what would be called the area of startups hmm. How many Kenyans actually lead startups in this country? Mm -hmm. How many people are CEOs who are at the forefront of startups? Because this is where you'll engage the youth. People of my ilk will be lost. <laughs> 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 Completely lost. You're a minority anyway. We so are like about 20,000 of you. We are. <laughs> but I thought, I thought we were five. Where did you get the other 15? <laughs> After the percentage. <laughs> That's too bad. Is, is that a new discount? <laughs> Uh -huh. <laughs> so, I'm asking this because if there's a space that the youth have an advantage over, remember I talked about the strengths, mm. Mm. and you don't have enough Kenyans occupying that space, 
you are already at a massive disadvantage. Mm. So the push that you're looking for, you see, one, the youth have something called time on their hands. They have time to make mistakes, change, they have time. Mm. Something like someone like me doesn't ha quite have. It's in fairly limited supply. Mm. Then they have something called energy. Again, I have it in limited supply. <laughs> okay. If you have it at all. Okay, <laughs> Even this talking is exhausting. Me. <laughs> <laughs> and then, man, they have energy. Mm. Mm -hmm. Now, how to channel it? How do you harness all that, Nerima? It's a lot, but I do agree with Ronnie in terms of organizing. But you know, also there's this mentality, and I don't know if you've seen it, where the there's competition, uh, and the competition is stiff amongst young people because you have been told if you don't strive hard enough, work hard enough, be number one, get all A's, you will not be able to live or survive. Mm. So you view everybody else around you as competition and an enemy. Would it comfort you to know that we were also told the same thing? Mm. <laughs> mm. Mm. Work hard. Mm. Yeah. And, and, and when the, I look at the person telling me that number one, like, are you, you, see, are you seeing that as a direct? Are you seeing that as a direct hurdle then to be to organized? Organize, it's to not, come together. Yes, yes, yeah. yes, yes, yes. Because mm. you'd think that it's that simple to tell people, let's work together. So but it's it, not. What is it? Com competition for what? It's not supposed to be easy, Nerima. It's not. And, and, and... I, I know that, uh, I, so I know what she's talking about. I, mm. I think today we have an extremely competitive yeah. culture amongst sure. young people. Sure. So it becomes harder to collaborate. Mr. Sumba, the, the competition is not the problem. The, the individualism is the problem. It, yes, mm. so that's my point. So that it has led them to be to that individualism. So collaboration has become that much harder. Mm. All right? But Nerima, again, I'll go back to my point. The, the strategies of those days won't work today so it is you to appreciate as leaders as the youth leaders to appreciate that we're working with very different dynamics how do we shift the strategies maybe you've tried it over the last five years if it's not working dump it if it's not working right we we need things that are working and things that will push the economic front and i think this is where muga was going with this argument uh, for for startups and experts it's a big problem that we need to address it's also a bit com more complex than we imagine it to be mm. um because they say largely we say money is not is colorblind but we know <laughs> no. that money sees color particularly in this startup in this startup space uh. oh it, it knows colors it, it absolutely knows colors and distinguishes between colors. And, but that's it, a and it tends to focus on some particular some color. Particular mm -hmm. color. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But that's a discussion for another day. But I, And I think what Muga is saying is, with shifting times, the strategies could shift. Maybe this, you know, obsession with political leadership is what is shutting you know the eye of the potential mm -hmm. of young people mm. maybe your game is economics maybe taking in this space this startup space and saying how do we support young people to build businesses think about how the u.s you know quite literally today is structured and influences policy it's enterprise it's economics mm. Bill Clinton put it It's economics. It's economics. But you're you know, I took you back to education and, and, and whether we teach these things and whether and that we should is because there is a lack of belief in our own and in our things and in us. We look at things that are outside our borders and we hold them in higher esteem. Mm. We look at people and we hold them in high esteem rather than our own. We are quick to criticize our own. We are quick to find fault. We should be even quicker to find the things that are good about our people. And support. And support it. You see, these numbers are useless if you do not utilize them. The energy is useless if we don't focus it in a direction that is helpful to us. Mm. If you are to sit young people the age group that you mentioned, and look at what they look at on YouTube or whatever. Yeah, it may be local content, but a lot of it is not local content. And and that, so what do you think influences their mind and their thinking? 
<laughs> you know, I, I find it amusing. Okay, fine, that's the young people. But where did he come from? It's like we're talking about a tree, but then we are not talking about the roots. What, but we're what, talking about the fruit. What did where come from? Like this, this that where we're talking about. Where did yeah. the take this from? How are we where here? did they learn it from? Yeah, where, where are we here? So even as much as we're talking about looking at ourselves, mm. did our parents look at our, themselves? So what are we instilling? The fact well, that youth today You're fortunate here, there's somebody who is not a bracket of your parents, and that's myself. Mm. Parents can only do what they know and how best they can apply it. B believe me, beyond that, they are also learning just as you are learning. Mm. That's true. <laughs> and this thing called parenting, there is no magic formula for it. You keep learning. And this concept of a child, you never stop being a child if that parent is alive. <laughs> In their mind, you are you are eighty. You're still a child if they are yeah. alive. Mm. So Interesting conversations we've had this morning. So we'll be letting uh, Ronnie Osumba leave us shortly. Um, Ronnie, your closing remarks for this. I think um, you know we are onto something. We are not having enough conversations around youth and youth issues. Perhaps we we got to a space where you know there was fatigue, youth youth issues fatigue. Right. And so I think it's a good conversation to be having. Um, you know, I'm, I'm sure a lot of young people are tuned in, young youth leaders are tuned in. And Nerima, since you're the representation here, I think my challenge to young people is just what we said before. We appreciate that it is a complex uh, uh, game for you. The world is changing rapidly. Uh, of course, COVID has now completely shifted the game even further. But you must organize. So it's, it's organizing and having the staying power and having the willingness to sacrifice a lot of things to be able to, you know, five, ten years down the line, get to where you want to get to. But before I let you go, actually, just give us your experience. You tried to organize the youth around a presidential campaign yep. and your candidature in that uh, 2013 election. What was it that you learned when the youth abandoned you in the final minute? <laughs> Oh, God. Um, I mean, I think there's a lot of lessons to be learned. And remember, it just didn't start with the presidential campaign. For me, it had been from the Katiba forums. Mm. We started in the early 2000s, uh, pushing for this uh, change. We then get this change that we want. And we started pushing the conversation around. You can't change the forest and leave the monkeys inside. Mm. Mm. Right? If you change the forest, change the monkeys also. Right? So we said, how do we change these monkeys? <laughs> Um, you know, uh, so we started shopping and then 2008 happened, 20, 20, 2007, 2008. And that, of course, completely shifted also the way we view each other as communities. And so we said, at least amongst my people, we said we have to change the monkeys. Mm. And so we jump into this bandwagon and we say, let's build a youthful campaign. And we thrived on, on social media, on Facebook and Twitter. Uh, but just like Nerima said earlier, this energy on Facebook and Twitter rarely converts to action mm. and so for me this is i think the one thing i took away mm. right the, le the big lesson the yeah. big lesson and i told you guys yeah. nowadays you know i have a twitter account but i'm not active on twitter mm. because for me it, it it showed me the fallacy of social media mm. that we can have invigorated debate but at the crux of the moment when we need that energy it dissipates and it's not there. So yeah. it's directed elsewhere. It's, it goes elsewhere. So yeah. Nerima, I think then, you know, my learnings are: let's not get excited about young people on social media. Mm -hmm. Let's let's think about how we convert that energy and channel it to real action on the ground. So we count those that are actually engaging on the ground. Yeah. Thank you very much, Ronnie Asante Sana. Before you go, um, we uh, have some information for you, and this is about KPA, and this is kpa.co.ke forward slash captain cargo k-a-r-g-o it's an information portal that uh, you go on to when you get to, to learn all this about kp and what kpa is doing so for example on the import process uh, today we are helping ct simulate uh, importation of some ppes from um, not the jack ma foundation but from china <clears throat> uh, <laughs> then they are coming into the country and he'll be selling them <laughs> in this market so far, we have yes. looked at the process. Emphasize so selling. Uh, they're not donations. They're not donations. No, he said no. no this is business <laughs> cash cow, man. <laughs> for selling. We're not playing uh -huh. here. Steps. 
Right, so we've gotten to the point whereby all government agencies have your documentation, right, CT? And uh, your stuff is on the vessel, it's on the way here. And now your agent uh, obtains a manifest number from the shipping agent and lodges the entry with KRA or other partner authorities. Let's just call it KRA, all right, for transit cargo. And then um, they pass the entry. Uh, the entry has been passed because you're good PPEs. It's a good thing now, COVID times, we understand, right? And they pay the duty which you provide, of course, uh, to the respective re revenue authority, which again, in this case, is um, KRA. So the CFA, CNF agent, which is your agent, now surrenders the bills to the shipping agent and the shipping agent sends the delivery to KPA. So now they're waiting for your stuff to dock and then they can offload it. Keep it right let here. Let me, yeah. let me just add, there CT's, are no free samples. CT's no, goods will be arriving shortly. Thank you very much for joining us on uh, KTN Home. This is the Situation Room. We know that uh, you're going back into your regular programming. Join us again tomorrow, KTN Home, from 7 to 9. In the Situation Room on Spice FM, we've been having CT Muga, uh, Nduoko, Eric Latif, uh, Rodi Osumba and Nerima Wakoji. And Nerima stays on because she's our guest host for today. And Ronnie lives and goes. So, Ronnie, before you go, you will be uh, told today's proverb by C.T. Muga. Today's proverb, I have to read it actually. Mm, so, get uh, the book. Do not worry. Uh, 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 this is good enough. My eyes are <laughs> yeah. You're far from the mic. <laughs> well, here. Yeah. Am I still far from the mic? <laughs> no, that's better. Okay. Do a good deed and throw it into the sea. Do a good deed and, and throw, throw it, it into, into the sea. The sea. Umela, are you? Tender mema. Oh, wow. Tender zako. Oh, All right. Good. Okay. So that's a good summary. Very good summary. <laughs> Very good. Congratulations. In fact, if you want people <laughs> in your neck of the woods to understand it, tender mema, kwenda uko. <laughs> well done. <laughs> Well done, well done. Thank you very much, Katie and Home. Keep it right here on Spice FM 94.4 in Nairobi. We are also in Mombasa on 87.9, 102.5 in Kisumu, 96.0 Nakuru, 96.7 in Eldoret, and Nyeri, and Malindi as well, 97.7 uh, in Malindi. And we live stream the show every day on uh, social media platforms, Spice FM KE on YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter, as well as www.spicefm.co.ke.